Hey, please mute yourself, Jennifer. I can hear you. Say what? Can you mute yourself, please? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So thank you for coming to today's um, revision lesson. Today we are covering agriculture. And like I mentioned, after this topic, there will be a quiz available. So um, under agriculture, we're gonna study the structure, systems of agriculture, the importance of agriculture to the national economy, um, how you can market agricultural products, and then agricultural policies, some problems we face with agriculture and remedies that we have for these problems. So what is agriculture? It involves the planting of crops and the rearing of animals for man um, use. Agricultural products can either be consumed or be used as inputs um, for other industries. For example, we can use um, tomato as an agricultural product, you can eat it, or we can then transform it into other things um, through an industrial manufacturing process. We have two broad categories for agriculture. There's um, subsistence agriculture, where it's, um, you know, varying or planting of crops for one's own use. And then we have commercial agriculture where it's for um, selling. So if we look at the structure, the syllabus covers about four main, um, I guess, types of, or yeah, of agriculture. We have food crops, which I mean, we would know of, we have cocoa, cashew, we have export crops. And these are crops that are usually made to be um, exported abroad. Then we have livestock, which involves the rearing of domestic animals, for example, pigs and chickens. And then finally, we have fisheries, which is, as you can guess, um, you know, rearing of fish. Now, the syst um, systems of agriculture that we would look at are peasant, commercial, cooperative, and state farming. Peasant farming is a small scale farming um, which involves the use of simple farm implements. It involves also the use of small farm holdings. It, production is for subsistence, subsistence and also for sale or export. When you think about peasant farming, you know that the labor or the people who perform um, this type of farming is usually just the farmer and his immediate family. So it's, it's a really small scale, um, I guess, system of farming. Then if we look at commercial farming, this on the other hand is large scale, it involves the use of machinery um, or other forms of capital, for example, irrigation, improved seedling, fertilizers. Um, production is both for the domestic market. So if you think about it in the Nigerian context, a lot of commercial farmers will produce for Nigeria, but then they will also produce to be exported to international markets. Um, Cooperative farming, on the other hand, is when, and remember that we looked at in business organizations, we looked at um, what a cooperative does. So here in cooperative farming, um, farmers of the same agricultural produce form an association and pool their resources together in order to enjoy certain incentives from the government and to produce on a large scale. And um, they also provide markets and facilities for their produce. So it's a way for farmers to come together, especially when they're really small and to sort of reap the benefits of being in a cooperative. Finally, we have state farming. And this is a system of agriculture in which the state through its different agencies um, engages in large scale farming, again, for both local and foreign markets. So when I say the state, I mean the government. So how, and I said, mentioned earlier that we're gonna look at how agriculture affects the national economy. And um, in Nigeria, especially, agriculture is a huge, forms a huge um, part of the economy. And, you know, the, if you look at what um, the government's manifestos have been, a lot of time, they're trying to get a lot of people to go into agriculture. And I wonder why, what benefit does that have for the economy? 
So the first thing is obviously it creates jobs. So through agriculture, people that live in rural areas are able to have jobs. In 2010, I think statistics showed that 30% of people um, in Andrea were engaged in agriculture. Um, it's also a source of foreign currency. Remember that I mentioned earlier that um, different types of farming um, systems um, send food abroad or sell food in international markets. Um, and this obviously, when you sell food in international markets, you gain foreign currency back. Um, and it's in Nigeria, it's mainly contributed by the export of cocoa and other cash crops that we specialize in. Agriculture is great for the economy because it diversifies the economy. As um, you are probably all aware of, Nigeria is, um, or was at least, um, an oil economy. And with the recent decline um, during COVID, especially in oil prices, the economic situation obviously was not very, I guess, advantageous for our economy. And so looking to diversify the economy by you know, focusing on agriculture is one of the ways that agriculture helps the economy. Another really important point is food security. Um, I mean, we need food to survive. Everybody needs food to survive. And by focusing on agriculture, you're able to provide more food for people within the, within the um, economy, within the state, within the country. Um, another, um, I guess, benefit of agriculture for the national economy is that it provides raw materials. So you know how I mentioned that um, sometimes agriculture, well, agriculture can either be consumed or be used as inputs for um, other industries. Well, this is, a, this is, I guess, a benefit of this in that we can cultivate cotton, um, palm oil, and other plants. We can consume them, but we can also actually use them in industry to help us make other types of things. So cotton, for example, we would use to make clothes um, another benefit is that it's revenue for the government. So a lot of times um, the government will tax agriculture, sorry, tax farmers and their agricultural incomes um, in order to raise money. And the more people you have involved in agriculture, the more revenue you have for the government. And then finally, if a country focuses on commercial farming, which tends to be capital intensive, then um, you will quickly realize that the country has um, increased the capital stock in, in the economy. So we see that um, agriculture has all these benefits for the economy, but then we also realize that, you know, we're not taking full advantage of this. And a lot of times it's because I guess products are not being marketed properly. So people don't, um, necessarily have access, either are not, you know, are not, um, are not partaking in, you know, farming themselves, or just don't know where to buy and get certain agricultural products. So to market better, um, the government can improve communication systems so that there's, you know, adequate information about the market for both the buyers and the sellers. The government can establish marketing boards which will help to improve the quality of the farm produce and also improve the marketing. Government can also construct and um, you know, maintain more good and um, I guess safe foods that would help link both the rural and urban areas so that there, more people are able to access agricultural products. But then I think also, you know, like I said, it's it's both a buyer and a seller issue. Sometimes there are just not enough markets to showcase the agricultural products. So the governments can make sure that there are more markets, places um, in both rural and urban areas that um, I guess farmers can sell their produce. And then another way is to encourage cooperative societies. Remember I mentioned that cooperative societies are of huge benefits to a lot of farmers, especially small scale farmers. And if the government encourages more cooperative societies, then they'll be better able to distribute um, the products. Finally, um, an issue we have is um, wastage of products, especially um, 
with fruit that have short shelf lives. The government can provide adequate storage facilities so that these products can be stored safely and not necessarily taken to the market all at once where they could spoil. So we've looked at um, you know, agriculture so far. Our next thing we're gonna look at are policies, especially policies that we have in Nigeria that are related to agriculture. So the first thing, there are about you know, five main policies that are usually focused on when we talk about agriculture in Nigeria. The first is the National Accelerated Food Production Program, NAFPP. Second is Operation Feed the Nation. That is the Green Revolution Program. Fourth is Go Back to Land Program. And the, five, the fifth one is a restoration of the elements of the, um, the first one after the military coup in 1985. So if we look at the National Accelerated Food Product, um, Production Program, which was in place from 1972 to 1973, we see that the policy goal of this was to make Nigeria self-sufficient in food production. So what the government did was to ensure that there was land reform and mass literary policies for farmers. Now, the issue with this program was that um, some farmers were not able to form cooperatives, which made them you know, fall behind. There was also, I guess, an abrupt or premature withdrawal of funding by the federal government because there was another introduction. Uh, there was another program that was introduced, that's Operation Nation. And then finally, the trials that were done um, on some farmers' plots didn't actually involve the farmers. And so you were kind of, you know, there was some, I guess, they, they, were, they were introduced to these things, but not properly. And so without the participation of farmers, they, weren't, they didn't learn as much as they could have. But I think it's important to note that all these policies, um, I guess the policies I'm mentioning started pretty early on in formation of, I guess, the um, Federal Republic of Nigeria. And you know that earlier on, the way the, I guess, the government was, we had um, back and forth between civilian rule and, um, and military rule. So there was, I guess, switching of different, um, different governments in a short space of time. So Operation Feed the Nation was to increase food production um, because they felt that if there was um, cheap food, it would lead to higher nutritional levels, which would help the nation grow tremendously. But again, as I mentioned, this only lasted till another regime came. So what it was supposed to do was that every piece of land in urban, suburban, and rural areas was meant to be planted while the government provided the inputs and subsidies. Farming was to be done in any and every available piece of land, irrespective of its um, suitability for agriculture. And the majority of participants in the program had little or no farming background. So these were some of the issues that I guess were some of the issues of this particular program. And finally, there was no formal or informal um, teaching or advice given to farmers and, on how to manage their farms. So if we look at the Green Revolution program, again, another program, um, the policy goal was to, I guess, stop the importation of food into Nigeria by boosting crop production within Nigeria and promoting big mechanized farming. But again, um, if we're being critical of this program as we have done with the other two, we see that the program didn't actually achieve its objective of increasing food supply because there was a delay in the execution of most of the projects involved in the program. And then there was also no monitoring and evaluation of the projects um, where huge sums of money were spent. Now, if we look at the Go Back to Land program, 1983 to 1985, in 1983, another military regime had toppled the civilian government and introduced the Go Back to Land program, 
which essentially aimed to make farmers out of all Nigerians. So um, the reason I mentioned these, these um, policies is so that we're aware that there are different agricultural policies in Nigeria. There are um, loads more that I haven't mentioned, but then it's also to realize that we have to be critical of the policies that you have to be able to evaluate and figure out what were the good things about the policy, the advantages of the policy, um, where did it work and where did it not work and why didn't it work in the different situations. So we've looked at agriculture and we've looked at some of the policies that um, government has tried to put into place. Let's look at some of the problems facing agriculture in Nigeria or West Africa in general. So the first thing is that um, some areas in West Africa have unsuitable climatic conditions. So because it's, it's some areas would have, for example, excessive rainfall, others would be severely dry. Um, and a lot of times these, these I guess these climate, um, climatic conditions are detrimental to crop and for animal growth. And so you wouldn't necessarily be able to grow anything or rear any animal in those areas. Another problem that um, we have is that there's poor technical knowledge. A lot of farmers don't actually have the technical knowledge and the skills to raise the standard of farming and agricultural production in their countries. So um, I'm sure, you know, in um, there's been, well, technology is a huge, huge, huge part of our lives nowadays. And that can be said for agriculture as well. There have been so many technological improvements for agriculture, yet um, a lot of countries in West Africa have not necessarily implemented these um, technological improvements. And so they're still using a lot of dated, um, I guess, mechanisms for farming. And that leads me to my third point, which is use of crude implements. So they still use things like cutlass, hoes for farming, and essentially have no opportunity for mechanized farming. The fourth problem is the rural urban drift. So there is essentially in, if we use Nigeria as an example, a lot of people are trying to move from the village to the city. Everybody wants to move to Lagos or the big city Abuja. And when this happens, what we call the, you know, rural urban drift, you lose vital labor in, um, in rural, rural cities, the rural, the rural parts of Nigeria. And because you know, we, have not, we haven't yet learned mechanized farming, there's no um, sort of way to replace it with mechanization. Um, another one that I will call out is the fact that there are pests and diseases which reduce the quality and the quantity of agricultural products, but farms can't, um, or farmers can't afford to purchase ins insecticides. And so it essentially is a huge problem that needs to be tackled. And the last one I will call out would be that in Nigeria and West Africa, there are poor storage facilities, which leads to wastage of farm produce. So I've mentioned all these problems, but there are things that can be done. So we look at policies that were put in place, but we can also look at different things that, or I guess more policies that governments can utilize to essentially increase the output, the agricultural output, and um, decrease the problems that we looked at previously. So the first thing that can be done is to educate farmers to eradicate illiteracy. So the more farmers know about agriculture and things that work and more tech, um, and they know um, about the latest technology, then you know, the more um, output can be produced. Government can provide finance by establishing agricultural banks. So we looked at um, financial institutions and we looked at under financial institutions a couple of weeks back. We looked at um, different types of banks like agricultural banks and the, like development banks, sorry. And um, agricultural bank is a pretty similar. Um, thirdly, they can um, introduce measures to effectively control pests and diseases. 
um, by producing um, pesticides or providing subsidies to these farmers to be able to purchase these pesticides. Um, in terms of the rural urban migration that I mentioned earlier, they could provide certain infrastructure facilities to reduce this and to open um, rural areas for trade that would essentially, I guess, provide more people in rural areas um, the means, um, the job opportunity to stay in the rural areas and um, contribute to the agricultural output there. Another way that we could, I guess, remedy agricultural problems is to provide adequate storage facilities and so also improve methods of preservation. So I mentioned tomatoes earlier, and I mentioned how a lot of times, a lot of tomatoes go to waste, either because not enough are sold um, or so are bought. And so farmers are left with, you know, tomatoes that just rot, or um, let's say they had, let's say they produce a lot more than was actually needed. There's no way of preserving this for a lot of farmers and they um, end up going to waste. So by the government providing storage facilities and methods to preserve you know, the tomatoes, they would essentially be fixing this problem of waste in um, agriculture. Another way to do this would be to also introduce processing industries, which would be able to turn, for, in the example of tomatoes, turning tomatoes to, for example, tomato paste that can last longer. If the government wants to, um, the government can also um, provide inputs like improved seedlings, fertilizers, and I mentioned pesticides earlier at subsidized rates. Um, in relation to, um, I guess, educating farmers, another way they could do this would be to establish research centers that um, would essentially conduct research into the different aspects of crop production. Um, and then I think finally, the last one I will call out would be to provide tools and machinery at subsidized rates to farmers. So I think um, I've left enough time for questions, if there are any. Um, as usual, there, this is the link for the test. I will post it inside the chat so that you are able to um, take the quiz afterwards. But if you have any questions on agriculture, please let me know. Oh, hello, um, Shubumi. Are you done with the class? Yes, I am. I oh. asked if there are any questions. Okay, okay, okay. So I, I, I think in the absence of question, um, she probably end the class. Uh, do, do you have an assignment? Um, yes, I've just put it inside the chat. Okay. Also, uh, send it to me on, on my, on, on my, on my, on my DM, so we can. Yeah. I can send it across to them and. Okay. Thank you okay. once again for this class. We really appreciate. No problem.